That's Arthi. That's Noor. And you're listening to The Reality Is. So, Lori, Noor doesn't believe that you are what years old? I'm 57 years old. I don't believe you, Lori. I am. I am. I just hide it very well. Yeah, you're too hip. <laughs> Black don't crack. Black, exactly. I mean, I got like, the grays all hidden, the lighting, everything is just. <laughs> yeah, your skin glows better than mine. And oh, you're so sweet. She is. Yeah, she is blemishless. <laughs> Listen, Lori, if they were more of a space for like beauty influencers of a certain age, you would be like page who? Okay. Oh. It would be like, oh. get out of here, Paige. <laughs> I'd have to work really hard. I'm, I just started on Twitter and I'm just like, I only have seven followers. Oh my God. Twitter is so stressful. So it I don't is. like Twitter, especially because like I have low self-esteem and I need a lot of validation. Mm-hmm. So if I like think that I'm so funny and I post something on Twitter and it just dies into the ether, I'm like, <laughs> that's a, that's, it hurts my soul. I'm like, that was, yeah, you're like you thought through this, you thought it was funny. It was Twitter level funny. Oh, yeah. And then you post it and nobody likes it. And a whole week later, Arthi noticed. It's like also stressful because like you really have a funny thought. You spend all this time, you know, really dumbing down the character. So you're like, I'm only going to keep the smartest, funniest, wittiest parts of this thought that I have. And you spend like 10 minutes on a fucking tweet and then it goes nowhere. It's so upsetting. I hate it. It's really hurtful. Yeah. So every time we tweet, we have our other personal accounts and we'll go back and like like it. (laughs) Yeah, of course. I'm like, oh, let me just... Her own (laughs) self-esteem. Yeah, I like will say something really funny on the podcast one. Then I'll go into my personal Instagram and be like, retweet. And it's so pathetic. It's like the most (laughs) pathetic, but, you know... Instagram, my pictures. Oh, it's gorgeous picture. I love that bag, says Lori Cummins, who just doesn't want to have Lori Cummins. (laughs) (laughs) It's a picture of food that Lori Cummins did. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay oh so God. for our listeners we obviously we have a third person in the studio today it's our friend Lori from did you guys meet each other through watch crappens yes Lori and i are the og listeners we didn't even know we were the first few listeners of watch what crappens and we've been listening forever right Lori, oh, you've yeah. been pulling the voice forever. I definitely think that there's something in the water in the DMV area because I'm finding there's so many people from the DMV that not just like Bravo, but like Bravo in a very specific way, which is the way we like Bravo, which is like, this yeah. is ridiculous. These people are insane. I know that this is probably killing my brain in some part of my mind, but my God, right. this is so entertaining, right? Like that group of Bravo listeners or like Bravo watchers exist through like Maryland, DC, New Jersey, and New York. And that's it. Yeah. But yeah, L- Lori, I'm really excited that you're on here. Yeah. So Lori and I were talking after our last podcast where we discussed Harry and Megan. And Lori, you were, this hurt you, the interview and the aftermath of it online and talking to people that truly hurt you personally. And we have been talking about it. Noor and I talk about it, but it's not from a perspective of somebody who is in an interracial marriage and has withstood a lot of this kind of discrimination. And I thought, well, why don't you come and share that? Because it's one thing for us to discuss it, but it's another thing for you to have lived it. So tell us more about yourself and why this story really hit close to heart for you. I think what started was that I sent you a test saying, I don't think I want to be on Facebook anymore or <laughs> Or social media <laughs> anymore. Which, by the way, everybody would support because honestly, there are days yeah. when I'm like, I don't think that I should be on Facebook anymore. Facebook is yeah. a terrible place and we should probably just get off of it. Continue. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> and so, what it was, the heart of it, it's an interracial relationship. I guess some of the things that she said touched a nerve in me because I'm married to a, a white man. I've been married for, will be 29 years in April. 
Congratulations. And we have a daughter. She went to Howard. And, you know, but she's also dealing with the fact that as a biracial child and the balance, you have a, a white father and a black mother. I just felt such such disrespect from so many people on Facebook as a whole, but some troubling comments made in our Bravo groups where it was like one person really just upset and he had said that she doesn't identify as a black person. So how is that? And I'm like, first of all, you don't have to do that. But when someone is just what they are, biracial, they're not passing. They're not supposed to pick a side as to where they want to be. And it wasn't Mm -hmm. her job to pick a side so that you could feel bad for her. And I just got angry by that because I know what it's like dealing with our child who is um, very Mm light-skinned, but also having people make all kinds of comments to me over the years. People not not sure that I'm her mother, you know, Mm -hmm. am I her babysitter, her nanny, Mm -hmm. all kinds of craziness. And at some point you just sort of feel like, oh god this is crazy and so when it happened uh, everybody getting all caught up in the in the hurt feelings of a Pierce Morgan or of uh, uh what's her name Sharon Osborne, all these other people weighing in and and in their feelings but just regarding how she felt and I just felt as a person who has raised a biracial child who um, is married to a white person who has had to balance her life like that it really mm-hmm. just started to anger me I don't care whether they're royalty or not they were a couple and mm-hmm. you know what they're going through is what a lot of times a lot of in our relationships we go through yeah i think i saw one tweet that said something like what harry and megan are talking about and their experience these are things these are conversations that happen often around biracial couples and their families and at the core they're still just people like they're just people like arthur said it we don't know him we don't know megan we barely know oprah But we're Mm -hmm. choosing to believe them and we're choosing to give them an ear. And when the conversation that we've been having in the last year, which is that when somebody comes to you with their trauma, the least you can do is listen to what they have to say. And, you know, so I appreciate, I'm so sad for you, Lori, that like you were so triggered in spaces that we all consider our safe spaces. You know, Bravo is like a, you know, time past safe space for us, but like it can be super triggering sometimes to just be around that kind of commentary on yeah. these people who are just people. I mean, Lala had a baby today, right? From Vanderpump mm-hmm. Rules. And mm-hmm. people didn't take more than a second to talk about her face. They're like, yeah. oh, baby's cute. What's wrong with but- her face? is wrong with her lips it's like she just pushed out a human being out of her exactly. body she just yeah. person just made a human so like it just pisses me off because yes we all sit here we all make jokes we poke fun at these people they're all ridiculous but when things like this happen and the, the majority of the response is these really terribly cold takes on these people it can be hurtful because you're like god yeah. damn i'm surrounded by fucking idiots like yeah. why are people like this so i understand and i hope that people just like do better like i hope that people realize that like you know when you're posting about somebody and how they look or how you don't believe them or how you think that there's some type of way imagine that there might be somebody on the other side reading this text and it might be triggering them in a certain way so just be mindful mm-hmm. of the things and i have to try to be better because i know i can make kind of flippant comments and be you know kind of harsh and i'm trying to do that at least i'm trying to make an effort on that it's not easy you know, I, I've had to, I, I made a joke. I said, you know, I'm closing down the, I call it the magical Negro show. I am not providing any more <laughs> interest, information for you. You need to start researching, figure things out, yeah. understand. And not, I don't have to always explain to you why something is racist. I mean, pick up a book or, or read or go read an article. Stop asking us to provide you guidance on this. I had a related question. So you brought it up. White passing, the term, right? We mentioned that, you know, Carrie from Dallas is white passing Mexican. And therefore, she gets treated different than Tiffany does, who is at glance, you can tell that she's Asian, right? Is that something that we need to change in terms of terminology. Is there something wrong in the way we approach that? My experience with that term is really just based on the fact that in our Black community, we had, because opportunities only came in through white society, there were a number of very light-skinned Black people who did pass for white or didn't look Black, it's all from quotes, air quotes around that, uh-huh. um, were African features. They could get away with that. I would say that that was a conscious decision 
decision. And, you know, you can argue whether it was right or wrong, but the time frame was that it, it was something where I could get further along in this very racially divided country if I passed my pass myself. Now, I'm not an expert sociological expert, so somebody will come, yeah. probably come on here and be like, Lori, you know what you're talking about. I don't know about Carrie as much because I would say, you know, Carrie is the benefit of being favored in some ways, not them. It's how people perceive lighter folks in all our groups as more as a little more accessible, more friendly, or more easier to get. Think about how a lot of people were talking about Megan being white passing. It's like, okay, she looks a certain way that yes, in many circumstances, she may be favored more so than a dark skinned person, mm-hmm. which is true. Her proximity to whiteness got her as close to the whitest, largest, longest standing institution in the world. But her blackness is still the thing that they use yeah. to discriminate against her and even in Carrie's situation right from Dallas yes she's white passing and she fit in with these ladies but her being a Mexican was still something that caused Leanne a racist to act out so racists are going to react to your other regardless of what you look like regardless of if you're blonde and blue-eyed and whatever like if there is even a little bit of that in you and they sense it they are going to attack it because that's just that's just how racists do Exactly. So like one drop rule, it doesn't matter. One drop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've navigated these world, these two worlds for a very long time. I mean, um, right. you work in these spaces, you socialize in these spaces, you do a lot of stuff, so you learn to you navigate. I, I never, I never loses. I never have my my face never just changes white all of a sudden, and <laughs> I know who and what I am, and this is what, I, and I present myself that way. Um, I'm. I think of myself as somebody who got a lot of things going on. I don't fit a stereotype, but I've learned to adapt to that. But it does get to a point where you get tired of feeling like, why do I have to explain, be your Sherpa? I'm not in the mood to be uh, somebody's mm-hmm. black Sherpa. You need to open up the way I had to open up. It, it just gets a little tiresome um, when you see it keep happening. And I get tired of the fact that our story... I, what bothered me really was it felt like her story got shoved aside real quick so we could spend time worrying about Pierce Morgan's hurt feelings mm-hmm. or somebody else's feelings or, you know, everybody else weighed in there. I'll, I'll talk about them, but, you know, her, she just, yeah, who cares? And so it felt a little bit like even our story gets co-opted. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. So yeah. it gets a bit frustrating. I felt that way too. When I read when I read the article also with Tiffany Moon, I was kind of like, oof. Yeah. That really kicked me. I was like, wow. Yeah. You know, when you thought about it, it's like that must have been something to sit in that group of women and just feel like nothing I say or do is good enough and I'm the bad guy here. Yeah. yeah. It's exhausting. I think what you said is perfect. It's that conversation changed from the way that Megan had felt and how she was feeling in that moment when she was talking to Oprah to how white people were reacting to what she had to say Mm -hmm. it was like what does the royal family think about what Meghan and Harry had to say? Like, fuck the royal family. Who gives a shit? Like, yeah, they're like, oh, we're not racist. Like, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you you're so not racist that you probably mm-hmm. don't even see color. Like, that's how yeah. that's how not racist sure. William is. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where like the conversation changes from how you felt going through your experience to how people are receiving what your pain is. Yeah. You know, even with Tiffany, by the time she's in Austin and this this whole thing is happening, she's had this conversation at the table. It's no longer about what Brandy said or did was wrong. It's now about how Tiffany is helping Brandy rehab from her yeah, image exactly. or yeah. whatever, you know? Yeah. And we saw a fraction of what Tiffany went through. And we, and we had such a visceral reaction to it. Our yeah. Dana gets so upset every single week talking about it. So the fact that Tiffany experienced it firsthand, I mean, I cannot imagine. She's saying that she's not sure if she's going to come back to the show. And I don't yeah. blame her. I, I hope that either. she does. I did tell her, exchange DMs with her, suggested what Arthi said last week, which was that she should be the lead on Married to Medicine Dallas, and it should just be a show about Asian and South Asian doctors. And I was like, could you imagine? Like, it would be like porn for our elders, just like a show (laughs) of Asian doctors. And she goes, she was like, I feel like they would still find a way to be very disappointed. I'm like, yeah, they would go Uh, crazy over like the ratings every week. They'd be like, okay, these ratings are fine, but Vanderpump ratings are better. Why? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Why? Yeah. You know? Why why is that yeah. one better? Why don't yeah. you have the better commercials? Why do you have a commercial exactly. for a Toyota? Why don't you have a commercial for I a Jaguar? 
do better. <laughs> yeah, do better. So do better. do better is like the motto of our lives. Okay, we were born, and the very next thing our mother said to us was do better. Yeah, so we have to constantly do better. <laughs> like, oh yeah. <laughs> It's the same thing too. It was like a doctor or a lawyer, or I dabbled a bit in art, and I still do a little bit of it. But I really was thinking about it seriously. And my dad humored it for a while, but he was quite clear to him. It's like there's no future in this. Uh, so, yeah. You know, yeah. No. You should be a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> I did the same thing. I loved art and I was going to pursue that. And my father was like, there's no money in it. You need money to survive. Yeah. Also, <laughs> even law. I was like, I want to go to law school for human rights and international relations. And my mm. mom was like, that shit don't make money. Like, we're not rich. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to law school. <laughs> they, were like, <laughs> they were like, go and volunteer at like UNICEF. Like, why are you bothered? Why are you making us spend money sending you to law school? Like, go and volunteer somewhere. Go to a soup kitchen if you care about humanity. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't even just be a lawyer. Like you can't even just be any kind of lawyer. You have to be like a lawyer yeah. that makes oh, yeah, you have to be really successful. Yeah. Corporate. yeah, exactly. Like you can't just be a doctor. You have to be like a specialist. You have to be like a fucking heart surgeon. Okay, if you're just like yeah. a regular doctor, get right, out of here. right, right. <laughs> go to go to the soup kitchen and then put it on your application for exactly. for medical school. That's yeah. community serving. Yeah, that's ultimate, that's how our, our parents were. I mean, we just yeah. this is what this is what's going to be respectable. This is what's going to get you, you know, on that tier. And you know, yeah. there's not much room. And so I was very sympathetic with uh, Tiffany's yeah. story. I I had a hard time watching that show though after a while because I felt like if I have to listen to Brandy whining one more time about needing to feel sad, that's what I hate. I need to feel comfortable. You need to make me feel comfortable. I can't express myself wrong. I'm like, what do you need to express? She wants to be able to do her Asian impression. And oh, she's yeah. not able to. Guys. She wanted Come to be on. on SNL. Okay, she yeah. wanted to be on SNL. Oh, yes. and all that that Asian impression was so devastatingly funny. I just I yeah. I almost forgot to laugh. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like Randy. Yeah. 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 Speaking of people that should shut up, Randall <laughs> Emmett should stop posting pictures of Lala and her birth. Did you see that he just posted all of her information? Oh, he no. posted. He posted her hospital tag that has her actual name, which is different, her birth date, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh and it's God. all up. Oh, oh my God. God. That's terrible. Your medical, your medical ID is literally like, when you get admitted to a hospital, I mean, that's like your social security number. Like, you do it not. Really oh, my God. It's right here. God. Yes. It's been an Did and it's been a whole that? day and he never took it. It's down. a whole oh day goodness. and he didn't take it down and now fifty cents knows how to get his money back. He can, <laughs> he, can, he can hack anything with Lala's name on it. This is like oh, no. I, people like that. It's like okay, okay, congratulations. Could you please give your wife uh, and the baby a moment? Yeah. Like give Lala a break. Like Lala actually looks beautiful compared to what most of us look like after we <laughs> Although I did see a comment that was so funny. It was like, you can have as many Gucci slides and Range Rovers, but when you go to push out a baby, you still get that nasty green gown like the rest of us. Like the rest of us. Yeah. (laughs) Even even Beyonce had to wear that nasty green gown when she gave birth to her. (laughs) So it's like, she may have booked out an entire floor at Lenox Hill in Manhattan, but she still had to wear that nasty green gown. still had to do it. It's the big equalizer. Oh, it is. (laughs) The green gown. The green gown is the great equalizer, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, you want to talk about Summer House? Yes. The yes. That will, summer House will clear, cleanse our palate. Yeah. Yes. It will redirect my rage from racist to all the Gen Xers and the Gen Zs. Hey, where, where, where it Wait, Gen Xers. No, not, not the Gen Xers. Not the no. Gen Xers, the millennials and the Gen Z. Okay, I take a I take a problem with that because I'm a millennial. Okay, so I think that what you the people you want to be mad at are the Gen Zs, Gen not Zs. the millennials. Okay. Okay, okay, millennials were just fine. What's the age group okay. on that one? Gen on Gen Z? Z? I think it's like, as everyone from 2000 onward. Gotcha. Whereas I think millennials, we stopped somewhere in the 90s, which I did not realize. I thought that millennials stopped in the 80s. It turns out people that were born in the 90s are bundling themselves into millennials. But I think that's probably because they don't want to be, <laughs> be associated with Gen Z. Yeah. <laughs> 
like Gen Z, Gen Z runs TikTok. Oh. This is like the oldest. Like if we have anybody who listens to us that's like under 25, they're like, fuck right. these bitches. We're not listening to them anymore. But yeah, okay, Summer House, we open on Stravi has <laughs> Stravi has left the building. Stravi <laughs> has left. Stravi yeah. has flounced out. And he was so quick to pack up too. He was ready. He knew this he shit was ready to go. <laughs> Yeah, he was ready to go. He was like, this is my out. Deuces. I'm out. But the funniest thing to me in all of this was like, okay, so he leaves. Yo, Kyle Cook is a fucking mess. He lo- he looks <laughs> like he's crying so hard. And I thought he was crying this hard because, you know, Carl, he's left. His brother's gone. Like, right. his brother died. All of a sudden, Carl is genuinely sobbing because Strappy left the house. And I, I, know. Really, I realized why. Because Lindsay comes out of the room. Kyle goes <laughs> to give her this big hug. And then Lindsay's like, why are you crying? <laughs> and he goes... She, just, she gave him a death stare. She was like, what's wrong with you? What I'm crying. Crying. What are you crying? Yeah. But I think Kyle was crying because now he, there's no buffer. There's <laughs> nobody to buffer him from Lindsay. No. And now Lindsay is a loose cannon. There's nobody to protect the house from Lindsay. Exactly. <laughs> Lindsay had a attack. Kyle is the dad of the house and he had found Lindsay the maniac a pet, Stravi. And now the pet has walked out and Lindsay has no one to take all of her yeah. angst out yeah. other than everybody else in the house. So the dad is like in tears. It's like, exactly. I got her a puppy, but the puppy ran away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Stravi I was like, with her. Stravi was oh, like Lindsay's. God. Stravi was like Lindsay's T'Challa this year. He was like her emotional like bird that he yes. had bought. She had bought but emotionally abused bird. Yeah, emotionally abused bird. And she kept him in a closet, pulled him out for parties, <laughs> stuff like that. But and demanded sandwiches. Demanded sandwiches. And and uh, fingering. But yeah. Uh, uh, all Lindsay needs is a finger bang and a sandwich. Oh God, you think she likes finger, finger sandwiches? Again. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Also like who fucking says finger bang? Kyle is like, who's going to finger bang Lindsay now? <laughs> no. <laughs> and Carl has left. He's like, Carl isn't even here to do that once in a while now. Looks probably going to help. Oh, yeah, it's possible. <laughs> oh, but yeah, th- I, it was that moment where Lindsay looks at Kyle and says, why are you crying? And then no. Carl's, Kyle's crying. He's like, Strabby, look. He packed up his stuff. <laughs> we just helped him pack and he left. I felt like Kyle was crying because he had to tell Lindsay, I just helped your boyfriend pack his stuff up to exit your relationship. And the way Lindsay stares at him is like she takes a beat and then she's like, anybody who decides to leave without even giving me a conversation is not worth my time. But I have two hours left of my birthday and we're going to have a fucking blast. I was like, (laughs) oh my God, this woman is bananas. She was so funny. Like when she... I'm scared of Lindsay, but I'm also so, I'm so in awe of her. Yeah, that's the thing. I In that moment, because you've talked uh, talked before about how Lindsay yeah. is Bethany Frankel at a younger age. Yeah. Like we, str- I, yeah. I'm seeing the lines, the, the dots are connecting. It's totally there. Like the way Lindsay took a bad situation and says, all right, well, we're going to make it work and it's going to be fucking fantastic. And the way she looks at everyone, everyone scurries to the kitchen and they get out shots and there's candles. <laughs> Daniel oh, yeah. is petrified. Kyle is still crying. Everybody's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a great." <laughs> They're terrified, Which and like, fear in her face. <laughs> and I, you know what? I feel like this is what probably makes Lindsay an amazing businesswoman. Like, she probably at work is a fucking monster. She's probably such a maniac to work for, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't be yeah. surprised that like. This is how she deals with issues at work, too. And everybody's just like, fuck, we got to make it work. One of us is going to get fired. I don't know who it's going to be, but I'm just going to go balls to the wall and do the best I can. You know, so. (laughs) This season when she had all those interns, her interns come over to a tiny apartment with Christine. And Christine's like on the corner side. And always, oh, they're all huddled around her. And I'm like, 
Oh my yeah. God, what is that? she has an all in a tiny apartment working. And remember, Bethany used to do that with her interns. Oh, yes. She had a bunch of interns and she did that. I'm telling you, I think that Hub House is basically the new skinny girl. She's like the Bethany of Bravo Future. Because oh, when yeah. Bethany came on Bravo, I think she was like 37 or 38. And Lindsay, by the way, Lindsay's 34 and they keep fucking talking about how old she is. I think two mm-hmm. episodes ago or something, they were like, Paige was like, oh, how old are you going to be? Lindsay was like 34 and Paige goes, oh, dang. I was like, oh, dang. 34 is not old. Okay. First of all, no age is old. Okay. You're only as old as you feel. And Mm -hmm. also, as long as you can still do whatever you want, you're fine. So it doesn't really matter how old you are. But 34 is not old, Lindsay. She needs to stop hanging out with these fucking assholes that are in their 20s that make her feel like she's such an old fart. Like, she's not a vibrant, albeit insane, (laughs) 34-year-old. And- (laughs) Like, I just wish that they would just be nicer to her. She's certifiable, oh but gosh, at the same crazy. time, she is somebody who knows she's crazy and manages it well and harnesses it to succeed in life. She is going to be okay. A lot of people are not going to be okay after they pass through Lindsay Town, but she's no. going to be fine at the end of the day. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I did love the that, that slow burn. That, that's the look on her face when she sat down at that table with after he made after he got the lame uh, dinner for her, and her face was hilarious. It was like, oh, mm-hmm. you're dead. You don't even know, but you're literally lying in a pool of your own blood right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She, she had like. <laughs> It was amazing. But then later on, Stravi sends Lindsay (laughs) a PowerPoint of what their relationship is, where it needs to improve, and how they're going to get better at (sighs) being a couple. And Lindsay seems totally touched by it. And again, I'm telling you, this is how Lindsay does her business. Like this is how Lindsay is taking however she does work and she's applying it to her relationship. And you could tell Lindsay's, I mean, he he might as well have sent her a sext. Like the way she treated that PowerPoint. She showed it to Danielle. Danielle's like, this is insane. And Lindsay's like, no, you know what? I think this is what we needed. <laughs> Listen, Danielle's reaction was how I would react. Because after doing project management all day, every day, <laughs> all day long, and then you come into your other part of your life and you see another yet another PowerPoint, Danielle was triggered. <laughs> She was like, she was traumatized by that PowerPoint and she was trying to put up a brave face because she knows Lindsay would kill her. Because she couldn't figure out if Lindsay was upset about yeah. it or if right. Lindsay was impressed with it. So Danielle was like, you know how you say when you don't know what to, if you should respond in the positive or the negative, you say, huh, interesting. Yeah. That, was, that was her response. She was like, huh, interesting. This is interesting. And then she waited to see what Lindsay would say. And Lindsay was like, I I actually like it. And then Danielle was like, oh, okay. I, I was just like floored because, I mean, yeah. I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt when of the whole thing, because I think, Lindsay, you're just too high maintenance. You want all these goals, but mm-hmm. you're going to have to give somebody a chance to do that. But that, that whole um, PowerPoint presentation was very weird. And I, I didn't understand when he got that together or, or what was he? thinking yeah here's what i think so i was looking at the powerpoint okay i paused on it to like really read it and understand it and here's what i believe okay this man i don't think that he actually like went and created a brand new document okay he was not going to recreate the wheel he's probably had clients because he works in hospitality i wouldn't be surprised if he's got like all these templates of like when they pitch like a new idea to a client of like how they can improve something and he just like took that template and just changed the text on it added Lindsay stravi all this stuff i think that he didn't actually really work on it that hard I think he just was like okay I'm just gonna I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna send it to her because I know that her insane mind is going to appreciate the business I have an even better theory I think they both created this pie chart and this relationship goals and everything together at the very beginning of their relationship and he just pulled it out she was just saying go back and review the document that we created relationship document Go check it out. And he went and picked that up because this is so insane that I can only imagine that Lindsay put it together. And he was just like, okay, I remember I reviewed my notes. Here's what it is. That's an interesting idea. 
<laughs> Lori responded to your theory the way that you just said that you should respond. She was like, mm, that's interesting. Interesting. Yes. I <laughs> While I think that that's a very valid possibility, mm-hmm. the, here's the reason why it can easily be debunked. There's no way Lindsay would ever let him have credit for it if she had ever been involved in creating something like that. That's, that's true. true. My other favorite scene in the episode was when Paige and Hannah are in the basement watching a movie or watching Love Island. And and, and it's a Friday yes. night. Oh, it's a Friday night. Ooh. And Danielle and Kyle and Amanda and Lindsay are outside having drinks and playing beer pong or whatever. And see Luke too. And Luke, Luke too. too. And Hannah and Paige. Paige sends a really obnoxious text saying, can you turn it down? There's other people in this house. You have to be courteous. Here's the thing, Paige. If you had said, can you just turn it down? Mm -hmm. It would have been fine. But to then be like, you have to be courteous. There's other people in this house. Like, go fuck yourself. Okay, you've been in bed all day. Okay, you barely work. Let Kyle blow off some steam. And by the way, Bravo has hired you not to sit in your bed and watch movies. And watch love. Bravo has tired so much time in bed. I'm like, do you guys do anything yeah. else? But in bed all the time. I'm shocked that Paige doesn't have bed sores at this point because <laughs> exactly. this woman has never moved out of the bed. I'm jealous. She is so low energy. She gets up, she takes a few pictures, she goes back and lies down in bed. That's all she does. I can see why Kyle gets annoyed by these two girls because they literally do nothing. Them and Sierra, they do nothing. But Sierra at least has done something before she came to this house. So yeah. that's okay. But these right. two really, truly don't seem to be doing anything. Also, I think going back to a couple of weeks ago, the point that you had brought up of Kyle mm-hmm. being dad and mm-hmm. those two being like the kids of the house, it's like very mm-hmm. much an experience you have as a parent when you're like, oh my God, I've like worked all day. And then you're like ready to like, just like enjoy mm-hmm. a night. Your kids are put to yes. bed. You get downstairs, you start to watch a movie and the kids start clamoring. And it's some oh, bullshit, yeah. right? It's I want water. I need to use the bathroom. It blanket is too hot. Now I'm too cold. I need socks. It's like mm-hmm. non fucking stop. And you're like, I just worked all day and I just need to blow off some steam. So I just need you to shut the fuck up and go to sleep. But they're like two snarky teenage girls. It's so irritating everything is like you know it's like okay you want to take out the garbage and you turn it into like i you just throw the garbage but you're about your relationship don't yell at me the way you would yell it you know it's like oh god god damn damn, just take up the goddamn garbage take it out how hard is this to do you spend more time worked up and working up your energy level to scream and holler and if i watch her one more time ugly cry and flounce off someplace I'm going to scream. I'm enough with that. Up to here with her. Yeah, she literally, <laughs> uh, after Bethany Frankel and her ugly cries, I oh. think Hannah Hannah Burner has the ugliest cries. Oh, my God. I realized uh. recently why I hate Hannah, amongst the many other reasons why I hate her. It's because <laughs> yes. she reminds me of Kimmy Gibbler from Full House. Like, I think that she thinks, yes, look at her, like her whole thing. Like she thinks she's so funny and she's like, but it's like, she's super annoying. She doesn't know when to shut up. She's always showing up at the wrong places. She's super entitled. Like Kimmy Gibbler was so entitled. She just walked into the Tanner's house and just (laughs) never even knocked or rang the doorbell. She just walked in (laughs) and it was like, you know, Hannah, this isn't your house, first of all. And it's not just your show. It's Kyle's show, if anything thing about it is that you know Kyle you know has he's had his moments over the seasons but I swear both Hannah and and Paige are just I know yeah. you need drama but I, I just t- the tween stuff is driving me crazy I'm so no, but there's no like, drama with them even no. it's never good drama like good no. drama on Summer House was like you know like the work is twins I mean they yes. threw a melon on the ground and one smashed a cake into Kyle Carl's face so it's like yeah. you want to talk drama and chaos it's a work is twins but it's not yes it's not Paige laying in bed complaining about the music however I love the real world and that was like my gateway drug into reality tv and this is like very real world drama oh. and I do yeah. I do really enjoy it. and I also loved when Hannah walked upstairs and they suddenly switched the topic from like talking shit oh, about that them was so to being smooth. like yeah I use the rowing machine <laughs> oh machine. yeah you look like you're sweating. it was like so it was like so funny and so that swift was good. So yeah. hilarious. My favorite scene from this week was when Kyle was truly a dad and just walked around huffing and puffing heavily ta- <laughs> while the, the, the two guys came in to repair the gas stove, the stove. 
when the stove repairman came and you know how dads just walk around they don't know how to repair it but they're going to act like they know and they're going to watch <laughs> over them and then just say oh good you guys are here and then walk back and forth and watch keep an eye on them that's how Kyle was I was like oh my god he's hilarious it's so funny <laughs> that's exactly right no you're exactly right it was like it was like he like stood there like put his hand on his waist he's like oh so glad yes. you guys are here and like, yeah. uh, really appreciate you guys being here. And it's like, Kyle, just yeah. go. Like, go you away. being in the kitchen isn't going to make them fix the oven anymore. And like, you're not involved yeah. at all here. It's like, it's just so funny. Thing of a jiggy going to, like, is that what needs to be attached? I mean, because I tried to attach, and I was trying to explain what they did before. It's like, this is why it's not working. If you're yes. Yeah, they will, they will try to explain to whoever has shown up, they'll try to explain what they tried to do to fix it, and it did not work. So don't even try. Right? Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. Go down, don't go down the three paths I went down and it mm-hmm. didn't quite fix it. So I'm trying to save you time so you don't you don't do that again. And then yeah. the guy comes in and does exactly what they had already tried to do and fixes yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So Mary to Medicine, episode two of this season. And guess what, Arthur? You were absolutely right. Toya was hungry because she yelled at everybody <laughs> at that party. She walked away. She yelled. She went over to the husband's and then she said, where are the fucking cupcakes? And I was like, oh, that's what it is. You're hungry. Your cupcakes. Did you notice yeah. know how Eugene, Eugene was like, as he's walking around, he's like, we got it. We're going to go for a walk. We're going to go for a walk. And he walks around and he's like, did you get to eat something? You should have eaten something. <laughs> and she says, I had a, I, she's like, I had a bucket of crabs. Yeah. Let's go. I'm, crabs I'm, so I'm so mad. I'm so mad. Oh yeah. my God. Toy was so funny. Like, uh, I got a cupcake. Oh <laughs> I did cupcake. And then, Lori is the one who came up with the term oh. Toya Toya Income Destroyer. <laughs> my God, my God, that poor. I like watch her year. See, the poor Eugene. I'm so amazed that he's alive because, man, a woman, you know, she's always like, we need a sidewalk. I need a, a double bed. I need a double thing. I need double sheeting. I need this thing. I need a huge house. And it's like, Eugene's only one person, Toya. One person. <laughs> It's so, it's so funny. But he, he loves her so much. He does. Yeah, he does. He does. Yeah. Do you know, Lori, that the house is on the market? Oh, oh. my God. Really? Yeah. No, I it, did not know that. It's on the market. And much to Marlo's dismay, it has a very small welcome mat. Oh, <laughs> that's The doormat right. is very I tiny. God. Super <laughs> tiny doormat. Super tiny one. Yeah. Oh, where really are they going to move? To a smaller house? Who fucking knows? Who knows? Toya, I would be surprised if Toya's like, we're selling the house. We're going to get an RV. We're going to drive around the country. Like, she's just so, she's never satisfied. And I absolutely adore that about her. Uh, Those kids have been moved so many times. Mm -hmm. They keep moving schools. But are they the sweetest kids? I mean, all the kids of the show... I love the kids. I love the kids. Back to to Simone doing her... Stay so... And her yelling. I love the yelling. Okay, I love them so much. I love watching them when she's standing there and she's talking about like when they were younger and when they met and Cecil had an old car and all this stuff. She, he's telling the story and he's about to be like, well, you know your mom. And then she's not sure what he's going to say. So she's like, Cecil, don't say that. Like, because she doesn't know what he's oh, about to say. tell his her, their yeah. children about their mother. Yeah. But he's like, oh, you know, she drove a really nice car and all this stuff like but he kind of like changes it up I felt like because like I felt like he was about to say something other something else about like right. Simone <laughs> and your youth but I just like love it because definitely see myself so much in Simone and I love like she's always like making fun of him he's always like getting on her about how OCD she is like I see myself in that couple a lot but I loved it I she looked adorable at that little drive through graduation party now what oh, did you guys think did. about the fact that Simone didn't invite Jackie to this graduation party. I'm on Simone's side with this argument, but I did feel that based on flashbacks they showed, clearly her Jackie had not only a friendship with her, but a kind of an auntie relationship with the kids. And so that should have been something where you like, look, our differences, our issues aside, you were part of their growing up, come to this event and hang out. We'll talk later. Yeah. I agree with you on the surface. Yes, she should have done that. But I think Jackie doesn't realize the severity of how hurt Simone is. And so this hopefully drives it into Jackie. Like this is how hurt she is, that she cannot even bear to have you at her son's Mm. graduation. That's how hurt she is. 
And I think Jackie needed to feel that. Otherwise, Jackie is the kind of person, and I don't like Jackie, so by the way, so I am always biased by that. But Jackie is the kind of person that won't realize how much she's hurt somebody because she doesn't think she's capable of doing anything wrong. She exactly. has such a sense of, I don't do wrong much. And when I do it like small things, and when I say sorry, I mean it, and you should accept it, and that's it. And I, everybody needs to move on. She's not the kind that actually sits and thinks about it and understands the other person's pain enough. She doesn't feel it. She doesn't empathize. So Simone would have to let it go, which she could. She could say, okay, I'm not going to let the small thing fester, but you know, she's unable to. That's a good point. One of the things I've always liked was that in the earlier seasons, their friendship was a, a genuine friendship. They mm-hmm. genuinely they worked together. I love when they would sit down and have lunch together outside on the, um, you know, on the benches and yes. talk. And right. it was kind of sweet. It was a nice break from, you know, the, the rest of what was going on. Um, but it was... Um, yeah, I, I, I can see that, you know, the only way, because Jackie was wrong, and you're right. I think she thinks because she's gone through what she's gone through, and, and you know, like I said, breast cancer is nothing to sneeze about or anything, mm-hmm. but she seems to think that she doesn't have the same, she doesn't have to be like mm-hmm. everybody else. And I just thought because there are the kids yeah. involved, perhaps a good buffer, hey, hang out with the kids, right. we'll talk later, we don't right. have to talk now. Yeah, I think I think it was totally wrong of Simone to not invite Jackie. But at the same time, like I was annoyed. But at Heavenly's party, Jackie's talking about, oh, I'm mad at you because you sided with Buffy. I think that's when Simone lost it. She's like, are you fucking kidding me? You're mad at Simone for not backing you on a thing that the entire fucking country watched and said, wow, Jackie, that was really fucked up. Something that you herself at the reunion said oh I didn't realize it hurt her so bad I should have been more kind whatever but now you're bringing that up about how mad you are when some when Simone is like look I'm not even mad at heavenly this has nothing to do with heavenly like she was so mature about it she was like this has nothing to do with you anymore I think like you and I are in a fine place but it's more about Jackie and my relationship with her and my expectations yeah. from her and then for Jackie yeah. to throw the Buffy thing at her face I was like fuck Jackie man Fuck that shit. Yeah. Like you could have yeah. sent her an invitation and said, sure, just come into family event, whatever. They don't have to talk. She could have just been cordial. Mm-hmm. But I think also Simone is trying well, to Jack- But I think Simone's trying is- to make a point. So right. that's how she's made a point. And and Jackie could have said, I didn't get invited, but I know the kid graduated. I'm going to send him a graduation gift. Mm, She didn't do that either. She didn't do any overtures. She didn't care about the kid enough to do overtures to the kid. She was, she was also expecting an invitation and she was used thinking of the kid as a pawn for that. Right. If she really cared about the child, she would have sent something to him as a, graduation gift or wished him or whatever she if she knew there was a graduation happening she could have reached out to the child but she didn't either she didn't try exactly and that's why that's why on this podcast we do not like dr jackie (laughs) (laughs) i also here's a reason the other reason why i don't like jackie and you guys are gonna think it's a really dumb reason but she's always giving quad like a reason or a space to talk about her feelings but as soon as quad starts to talk about her feelings and i get it quad takes a long time to talk about her feelings Mm -hmm. as soon as she does jackie's the first one to start rolling her eyes and hemming and hawing i'm like well jackie you told her to share her feelings and now that she is you're like wagging your finger at the way that quad Mm -hmm. is sharing her feelings you know and it's like it's not Mm -hmm. actually about how you're reacting to her feelings it's just about you listening which is what we started Mm -hmm. talking about in the beginning of this episode full circle guys yeah but (laughs) What did you think about our Daisy sisters debut? Yeah, so we got a whole scene about Anila at home with her family. She's upset about the fact that they can't complete the house because of the pandemic. Their family's taking a financial hit. Her husband is an ocular surgeon. It did bother me that she was like, look at Toya. She's blessed. And I was like, yeah, I don't love that. You're also yeah. blessed, Anila. Knock it off. The yeah. other thing yeah. that kind of drove me insane was, I mean, I got the point, but at the party when Heavenly starts to get really angry and Damon like hugs her to calm her down and then he's like, stop talking, stop talking. And then he's like, people are dying. You, don't, you guys don't need to fight with each other. And I was like, you know, Damon, I, I know what you're trying to say, but like mm-hmm. when ladies fight, 
we don't need to be reminded that there's like worse things in the world. Like, let us have our feelings right now. Please don't tell us that there's something else worse that's going on. So you're not supposed to feel the thing that you're feeling in that. I disagree with you on that. That's Damon's heavenly whisper. Okay. He's whispering to heavenly whisper. Damon is our heavenly Heavenly whisper. whisper. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. You're right. right. And he needs to whisper something that will shock heavenly into shutting down. Otherwise, like a tranquilizer. it's a tranquilizer. So he's yeah. like, I'm going to give her the biggest tranquilizer that I know at this moment she is sensitive to and that she will respond to. So that's what he did was talk about Black Lives Matter. So Heavenly could switch down and calm down. Damon and uh, Eugene are constantly trying to figure out how to keep calm down their women, right? Eugene is like, Eugene is like, get some food, put some food in front of toy. Stuffing cupcakes in her face. To calm her down. And Damon is like, I just need to hug her and whisper in her ear and say something that will shock her into just coming down. So Heavenly just goes right down that pipe. I mean, she's not one of my favorite people on the show. It irritates me about is that she's all the, you know, the Bible thumper. She's all about giving you like spiritual and Bible. But then the minute, you know, you turn, she turns, she's cussing you out like a sailor. It's like, oh, okay. I didn't know my mom was a whore. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, mama. <laughs> Like this, and you're like, you know, run up something. I just want you know, calm, calm down. But that's really about heavenly is that she just goes right to the jugular, and I, I'm like with her. I'm like, and then she's going. I, I'm still trying to learn. I made. A, I'm a. I'm a. And what is that? I'm a work in progress. I'm like, honey, you've had like what five seasons now. Get that job done. Get the work done, please, quickly. Because I am really tired of you cussing people out in the vilest terms. Yeah, I agree. I Lord think out, Lord I, out Dirty Ho is what that's her favorite. Your dirty ass. Lord <laughs> down Dirty Ho. It's so funny. Like Heavenly, I'm like shocked that like Heavenly, like I, I just wonder sometimes, like is Heavenly putting on a show? Because how does she have this husband and these? Oh my God, Alora is like the oh, best child on Bravo. Is- She's Aww. the best kid on Bravo. She's, she's so funny oh. and she's so smart and she's so cute. And it's like, yeah. I don't understand how this person, this <laughs> sane woman who says, <laughs> your mama, who still says your mama? Like in the 2020s, like it's oh, that, that season was 2019. It's like, what were you doing <laughs> saying your mama? She your called mama. Buffy fat. Like it was insane. <laughs> she's so yeah. crazy. It's like she, it's like Arthi said it last time we were talking about this. Arthi said she is the married to medicine Ramona. Like that's what she is. <laughs> She's the closest thing we have to like a black Ramona on Bravo. That is, <laughs> that is so true. You're right about that. Cause she's always saying, I need to work. I'm going to work on myself. I'm, I'm trying to improve. Oh, you dirty bitch. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even Ramona wants you to go to church. So it's like the very, very much like a heavenly situation. That is really but- good. So what did you think of Heavenly and her new blogger patient that she fixed up the teeth for? Okay, that guy. So it was so interesting because he, during the Candace Monique drama, he was Mm -hmm. very, very vocal Mm anti-Candace pro Monique. He was like a a team Monique blogger. So it was really oh, interesting really? to see him. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It was really oh, yeah. interesting to see him on TV. He went in, I mean, he's not even just anti Candace. He's actually staunchly anti Giselle. He went in uh-huh. on Jamal. Like heavenly is buying goodwill on the interwebs. One crown at a time. Oh, <laughs> like, good point. <laughs> Good point. Yes, you're probably right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes more sense. That like she she's would take this guy. So, yeah, yeah, she, yeah. And this, and so she's like, she's like, you know, some people like Monique probably sends them, you know, swag bags. Heavenly's like, how about a crown? How about a crown? Yeah, a bottle of Ladam doesn't compare to actual tea. To that. No, no, it does not. Wait, quick note. Quick note. Speaking of Ladam, guess who was at Mohegan Sun? Oh, I love I love playing guessing games. Okay. A housewife, <laughs> a housewife from New Jersey was at Mohegan Sun with somebody who is sometimes seen in Potomac. Name those two people. Somebody who is sometimes seen in Potomac. And a housewife from New Jersey. We're at Mohegan I'm say Sun. Marge is the housewife from New Jersey. Mm-hmm. 
And some the person that's sometimes seen on Potomac. So that doesn't mean a regular. Who is sometimes seen in Potomac? Sometimes, Everybody's yeah. seen. Uh, the clown? <laughs> Faster than all? March, Marge in the mime. Marge in the mime. <laughs> but then I'm like, I don't think she would have found her way to Mohegan Sun. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I think it's uh, Teresa. Teresa and Jamal? No. Ooh. So, so Lori was right. It was Marge. Uh-huh. And Matt. Matt. <laughs> but it's not just Marge. It's oh, like Marge. I have been it was like Marge, Joe, Marge Sr. And Matt. And Mohegan's son. I was like, did he drive up with them? Like, did they take a, an Uber together? Like, he what was that? He has so He has so many, t- so many roles. He's a... Oh, my God. Oh, you think Matt got uh, his vaccine before us? Probably did. Yes. <laughs> He okay. can do anything. He's special. He's got magic. I don't know what he does. He's got so many different roles. Yeah, he probably went to, he was like those people in Florida that like came from out of state and like got their vaccines for mm-hmm. sure. Because he was like, listen, there are housewives whose butts I need to lick. So like, I gotta go. <laughs> 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 I've got to be okay. a bouncer somewhere soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At a fever event. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We completely ignored Contessa, which is what she should be ignored. But it was yeah, like, I don't care about Contessa. I'm not interested, so we're not going to talk about Contessa. God, yeah, I don't care about that. that oh, she's just... Uh. Um, all things she was funny. What she did say was that I'm becoming a bouncer, and they yeah, showed all those true. kids. That was, yeah, that was really funny. Was kind of funny. I only remembered. I only remembered Contessa because you said bouncer, but otherwise, <laughs> yeah. nothing else. It's not even. She doesn't. No. Why is she even there? I, guess I don't bouncer. know, but next episode she gets into a fight with Anila, and I can't wait. Oh gosh! What do, what do you think of her? What do you think of the new uh, the new person? I think she's fine. I'd like to get to know more of her. I was annoyed by the fact that she said, "Oh, Toya's so blessed because she has a nice big house." I was like, right. mm, "People are dying." So like, oh. I hate that. Um, which is so funny because I just d- dinged Damon for saying the same thing too. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> heavenly um but i guess i'll get to know her i like the fact that she was just feeding her kids chicken nuggets and mac and cheese i was like you know what me too <laughs> i love that big huge broccoli did you notice the broccoli that yeah. was gonna be left so like, wow it's a huge wedge of block broccoli there <laughs> yeah i think that the for the first scene they were like being extra lovey-dovey and all that stuff i guess we'll see how it goes Anybody yeah, whose sure. career is fashion blogging slash influencing, I just kind of like have to roll my eyes because mm. it's not even like you're creating like fun content. Like you're just taking a picture and posting it. And I get it. It's like a career now for young people. But like, like I can imagine myself quitting my day, no- day job to eventually make like podcasting the thing that like pays my rent or like pays for my mortgage if I ever, if we ever end up making that much money, which we don't. But... <laughs> But, like, at least there is, like, a craft to, like, making jokes and, like, having conversation and, like, point, right. like, there's something there, whereas, in my opinion, when you take just a picture and just post it, I'm, like, I am not impressed, you know? I'm going to be like you, Arthi. I'm, like, going to take the Vicky Gunvalson, Shannon Bedore route mm-hmm. and say, I'm not impressed, okay? Get a not job. Yet. Not yet. Get a job. Get a job. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how she goes. I, I mean, right. I want to, I want to support her, but we'll see. We haven't yeah. seen enough of her to make a, make a, have an opinion. I like her to rethink her hair, though. I like her to rethink her hair in one of her confessionals because it was this huge lump that was over one side of her head. It was like, can, can you just, just spread it out a little bit more? <laughs> spread it out. <laughs> I, I will say, she, you know, just because she's just because she's South Asian does not mean that I will just blindly support her. She no, could have just be. left her natural hair. I think she's going heavy on the hair for no reason. For no reason. Yeah. I think she's she could back on that. One bundle yeah. is enough. One bundle yeah. is just fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for this episode. Lori, thank you so much for coming on this was fun thank you guys so much for the opportunity i hope i made sense and you did it was just so sweet 
Oh my God. We, love you, it. we were not that sweet. We were just making fun of everyone. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that you, is there anything you wanted to like plug or like anything you want people to check out? And even if it's like a foundation or anything, like something that you would like attention brought to if, since you're on the well, platform. Well, I just want folks to just be sure to check out Alzheimer's Society um, and, you know, reach out and support the organizations if you can. Um, other than that, um, folks, to come listen to you all because I love your podcast. You're one of the few podcasts I listen to on a regular basis and I enjoy your insight and I'm so happy to have diversity of voices and you guys are definitely on top of my list on that. And I just oh, want to thank Lori. you Jen, so much yeah. for you don't this plug opportunity. Us. Don't plug us on your opportunity to plug something. Oh, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't have anything. I'm not uh, any kind of influencer, but like I said, <laughs> that sort of stuff. And, you know, just be kind to each other. Please be yes. kind. You know, take a breath, take a step back before you start just writing something. Think about the impact, you know, realize that there are all kinds of people there and, and try to be kinder. That's all we can ask for. And go listen to Watch What Crappens because that's oh, yes. the best. Those boys have brought us together brought yeah. quite a few of us together and there's the, they're the best alright Lori thanks everybody for listening we'll talk to you on Saturday when we talk housewives bye, bye. guys bye. Bye.